And I've decided to record how I make a setup for this case, which is quite common and quite simple for clear liners. Um, I think the vast majority of our liner cases, they're, they're mostly about resolving some interior crowding, maybe some expansion, so that I decided to make more videos about such simple and uh common cases and first of all as usual we start with uh checking the roots and as usual i set the center rotation to 70 percent and to the root not to the crown and here what is important if i want to just expand without rotating the premolars I position the axis of the uh, virtual virtual teeth so that uh, when I expand, when I use this uh, vestibular movement, the tooth it moves strictly to the direction I want, not more mesial direction not to more distal so that i i never i never fix such small rotations i don't see any sense of doing that not aesthetical nor functional there is just no sense to fix such kind of premolar and molar rotations we just create some unstable teeth position which will probably relapse immediately after we finish the treatment so that I ignore the anatomy of the roots and I set the axis to the directions I want but not for incisors and canines of course where I follow the anatomy of the roots now let's do the same for the lower arch If I make it this way, if I set the axis this way, when I'll be moving the teeth or this particular tooth alongside this X, it's going to move not just buckly, but also measly. So I don't want to have this, um, you know, unwanted movement. So that this is the way how we can avoid it. We position the axis the right way, ignoring the roots anatomy, like I'm showing to you now, and for canines and uh, incisors, it's opposite. Here we have to check. To precisely check all the all the three axes so that they go through the real anatomy of these teeth. So once we've done we can proceed to the virtual setup stage. Well, I always start with some expansion of the lower premolars and molars. And if we are seeing such kind of gaps, we have to close them with distal tipping of the premolars. And for the 
second molars we cannot just tip them because the liner cannot produce enough force for this movement so that i just don't do anything to them and then i'll expand the frontal teeth following my rule which says that rotations shouldn't exceed the torque if we want to achieve the predictable amount of rotations uh -huh, I see here i can see that we get this kind of fenestration so we have to stop at this point and I guess we should reduce the amount of rotation at the layer one uh, for this incisor. Okay. Now I'm distributing the space equally between all the incisors and canines so that when they go backwards, we'll strip. We'll make the IPR equally or like saying the same amount between all the teeth and all the contacts. And now we can proceed with the upper jaw. Let's do the same amount, the same amount of expansion, like some slight buckle tipping of the molars and premolars again i don't see any reasons to fix these rotations so that i always try to make the setups more predictable simpler as possible Let's check if we get some roots outside of the bone. No, we don't. So that we just expand, rotate, and follow this ratio between rotation and the torque. Both for canines and for incisors. This Movement is called round tripping. Yes, we'll get such gaps between the teeth for some certain stages, but as uh, as the result, we'll get a successful, successfully done rotations. I think I just have distributed the space equally between all the insiders and canines. And now we can proceed to the layer two. So I always complete such simple cases within two layers. I don't see any sense of making more of them. I start the first layer with lower jaw and the second layer with upper jaw okay. Don't forget to create a new layer to make sure you're not working at the same layer as you started with. Okay. 
we're moving all the incisors and canines to the lingual direction, completing the rotations. Keeping the teeth in the mesal distal directions so that we close all the spaces equally, simultaneously. And what do we do if we start to see such fenestrations? Let's turn the gingiva on. It means that we have to reduce the amount of tipping and replace it with um, bodily movements. But how can we do that? So let's reduce. Uh, let's let's tip the teeth back. And now, you know, we can use the movement the lingual movement we can use the axis but what will what what will we get this way we'll get the extrusion of the insider but we don't want to so that we cannot just use this axis for bodily movements what i do we have two solutions first one is to get back to the change local origo stage to change the axis so that they'll be like this way and you'll be able to move the incisor in the strict horizontal plane or there is a second option which is much simpler you can just use the buttons or like your position, um, you position the tooth this way so that you watch on it strictly from this ninety degrees angle, and you use the arrow buttons. Uh -huh. uh, sorry, I forgot how to turn this on in my software so that I can show which buttons um, am I pressing. But anyway, I'm pressing just arrow buttons on my keyboard. And this way, we translate these insiders. Not Extruding them, not tipping them. This is a very good solution. Uh, we just have to add some negative attachments, which Invisalign calls the power ridges. I think. <laughs> I did it too much, so I have to even get back to the previous position of these teeth and reduce the amount of maybe replace, maybe combine the tipping with um, the bodily movement. If you making any kind of bodily movement in this lingual direction, they will not automatically happen. You have to add some 
negative attachments or some intrusion in combination with this uh, bodily movement but in in this particular case i think that the negative attachments are okay and i'm not going to add anything else well i would like to improve the torque of these two but you see what happens if i do so that i'll have to leave it tipped more lingually than the other insiders anyway for the patient it's not a big you know difference well grind the uh, surfaces of these uh, incisors with some diamond burr so that it's gonna be okay in terms of aesthetics well uh, let's see we have some sagittal gap let's try to reduce it first of all let's check have we had the sagittal gap at the beginning at the start yes there was some so our goal is not to increase it I'm not a big fan of unnecessary distalization. So here I don't think that it's a good idea to distalize all the posterior teeth on the upper jaw in order to just get some more space. Uh-huh, here something goes wrong. So we have to start a uh, stop here. So, uh, same as we did at the lower arch, the lower arch. So it's gonna be same. We're combining. Are combining the bodily movement, the translation of the insiders. Some amount of tipping uh, as well. the patient has to undergo an IPR yes shouldn't be a problem oh no let's select just upper arch and reduce the amount of IPR I think some slight sagittal gap is okay. We'll leave it as it is. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, we're checking the final look. Of course, we cannot, um, you know, we cannot improve the angulation, the axis of these incisors. It's just not possible with the liners, as we know. And I don't think it's going to be a problem for the patient. Okay, then I'm checking the overcorrection if this part if like this distal part of the central insiders the central insider it was like outside and this one was inwards and the final stage we have to make it slightly opposite so this one should be a little bit forward this mesial part of the lateral insider should be a bit more outward and this 
for inward and same for the left side oh no 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 same for the left side it looks good uh, okay make some digital chain to make sure that all the gaps are gonna be closed at the final liner we're gonna check the overcorrection for the lock In what was more outwards we're putting more inwards and vice versa i'm satisfied with the uh, result now it's time to make some attachments we'll need a strong retention so that i'll put this shape zero nine Attachments on the first premolars with some minus work uh, for the lower ones and um, so that my goal is to make them like 90 degrees here this angle between the surface of the tooth and surface of the attachment so that's why I add some additional Correction of the work of the attachment and for the molars, you know, retention is always a good thing. So, I'm going to add some rectangular B wheel attachments. You can use any based on your own preferences you just have to create some strong retention so that the liner doesn't leave by itself so that it it's tight on the dentition and you can use different kinds of shapes it's not a like an some rule or something some law um just my personal preference and let's check do we have some significant rotations of the canines yes we do we rotated to upper canines distally so that i'm going to bond some attachments to help these rotations to happen you can use again you can use many different kind of kinds of shapes just make sure that you put the attachments alongside the axis alongside x you've rotated uh, round off so that there there will be no sense if you position the attachment this way so try to put them like kind of parallel to this virtual x of the t here for the upper arch should we attachment here i think now i'll just reduce the amount of 
rotation for this canine because I don't really see any sense of rotating. And yep, let's add some virtual chain for the upper arch or for the lower arch, sorry, as well. Just minus torque for all the teeth. Wow. Have I added an intrusion? No, I haven't. So that I have to add some negative attachments to all the insiders, both upper and lower. Let's firstly save the setup. Sometimes I stroke and crush and destroy all the things you've done without saving them. Well, we're adding some power ridges. It's not the attachments we bond to the teeth. These are uh, not basically the attachments at all. These are uh, just some kind of, you know, dimples, some. Uh, parts looking inwards into the towards the surface of the teeth that's why they marked red in maestro wow well, um, do something okay we have to set all these attachments to all the all the layers but with the uh, power ridges we have to start using them only at the second layer so that should look like this and i think i'll add some negative attachments to enhance the rotations of some particular teeth i'm going to add three of them two negative attachments here on a um, meso not all surfaces of the upper central insiders and with the lower jaw here Try to even increase the rotations so that maybe our negative attachment gonna help us here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, well. Okay, mm. I don't like how and how unequally unequally it you know positioned. I can manually adjust it. Now it looks better. Let's try. Let's try here. I think it's it looks okay. But maybe here we should shift it a bit miserly. Here also. Um slight measle shift to this attachment. Okay, don't forget to put the numbers so that our technician doesn't mix up the models between each other. And now we can proceed to the models builder. The previous setup I made in Maestro was for graphy liners, and here I had very different limitations for all kinds of movements. So that I changed my config to my usual 
um, numbers uh, for like conventional type liners. And here it was the tooth. I moved the must. I think it was this canine so that I have to reduce my movements down to 0 0.2 millimeters per step. And here I think it was this incisors. They moved the must. Okay, I think 19 aligners less is safe. Uh, I mean, more is safer less um, step uh, the less amount of movements you make the safer it goes so that i don't have a goal to you know to speed up the treatment if it can be harmful for the result okay and here i would stay also at nine and nine i like numbers i see i also like the symmetry like when we have the same amount of aligners for both jaws it's very convenient for the doctor and the patient and for me as a lab um let's see the animation going on at the layer one we are expanding the teeth and the premolars and the frontal teeth as well and then we are closing the spaces pretty equally stripping them at the very final stages very final aligners and at the lower jaw it should be same some expansion and lingual tipping plus translation of the incisors and tipping of the canines. All the roots stayed inside the bone. We achieved the desired result. Then I'm going to export this case um, and M. 3D format, like you go here, export for viewer, you call it some way you want it to be called, and you save it, and then upload it to the cloud. Okay, thank you for watching. See you in the next videos. Bye.